Shots were fired overnight at a Columbia student apartment complex. Columbia businesses work together to give mid-Missouri children the experience of a lifetime. And today's weather may not have been as sunny or warm as yesterday, but people still found a reason to head outside. Tammy Wait News at 6 starts right now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 6. Columbia police are still trying to put the pieces together as to who's behind the shots fired at the Gateway apartment complex. Good evening, I'm Lauren Richardson. And I'm Elise Ojoni. Police responded to that call at around 2.08 this morning. Police also found four shell casings near the clubhouse parking lot. Residents say they saw hundreds of people mobbing the complex's clubhouse before they heard those gunshots. We heard, um, like, a gunshot go off. And then it was like, a few more, like four or five more, like in rapid succession. Oh, we were like, oh, we gotta get inside. Gateway staff told KMU 8 News they don't believe those involved in the shooting were Gateway residents. Police say they have no victim or suspect information at this time. Well, hopefully you got a chance to go out and experience that beautiful day we had yesterday on your Friday, because today things are feeling a little bit more on the wintry side out there. Now, that cold front that moved through the area today really bumped temperatures down quite a bit out there. We're only hanging around the lower to mid 40s around most of the viewing area right now. We're 41 degrees in Columbia and Mexico, 44 right now in Jefferson City. And as you can see, we are continuing to see those gloomy, cloudy skies out there. We could see some light shower activity across mid-Missouri here for the remainder of our evening hours. Now that's going to switch into some snowfall for the early part of our Sunday and then switch back to rain as we warm things up a little bit for tomorrow afternoon. We'll take a closer look at where and when that's going to take place in just a few minutes. Many mid-Missouri schools will release for spring break in the next couple of weeks. But while you're on vacation, the Columbia Police Department will be working extra hard to keep your neighborhood safe. This spring break season, Columbia Police have additional officers on duty. The department will use uniformed and plain clothes personnel, as well as both marked and unmarked cars. There will also be additional neighborhood patrols in areas identified as higher potential targets. Police will begin additional neighborhood patrolling at the end of next week when local universities are released for spring break. Well, all this talk of spring and warm weather this week surely had kids across mid-Missouri thinking about their summer vacation. KMU8's Dan Malloy explains how local businesses are trying to make this a special summer for some mid-Missouri kids. These fundraising programs at Lowe's run through March 31st. For more information about the Muscular Dystrophy Association, visit our website, KOMU.com. More than 100 people took part in Columbia's first annual National Eating Disorder Association Walk today. NIDA is an organization that provides programs and services to those recovering from eating disorders and puts on more than 40 walks across the country. Both people and their animals participated in today's one-mile walk across Columbia Cosmopolitan Park. Emmy Boyd, the walk coordinator, is in her third year of recovery from an eating disorder and says this type of walk is needed in Columbia. I felt like it was important to bring the word out, like people should not be ashamed to um, admit that they have an eating disorder, that they need help, and um, this is just a great way to be able to bring resources, um, to show the Columbia community that we have resources here. The Columbia Nita Walk exceeded its $5,000 goal, raising almost $7,000. Boyd says she is excited to help make this an annual event for the Columbia community. In national news today, crews continue to battle the Galena wildfire in northern Colorado today. Friday's heavy winds grew the fire up to 1,000 acres. As of this morning, the fire was 5% contained. Firefighters saved two homes and a state park visitor center from flames. The fire is burning west of Fort Collins near the Horsetooth Reservoir. This video from the Sentinel newspaper shows the aftermath of a tour bus that ran off the Pennsylvania Turnpike this morning and crashed into a tree, killing two people. The women's lacrosse team from Seton Hill University, a small Catholic school near Pittsburgh, were headed to a game when the accident happened. The driver and a pregnant coach were killed in the crash, and two others were airlifted to a hospital. Police have yet to determine what caused the crash. And now in your international news, a new government has been formed in Israel. The Israeli Prime Minister and his party signed a coalition deal that's supposed to focus on domestic issues and sideline the conflict with the Palestinians. 
The new government will be the first in a decade not to include ultra-Orthodox parties, which some Israelis believe have been coddled recently by the state. The new administration will take office next week when President Obama is set to visit Israel and the Palestinian territories. And we have some wintry weather for the start of our St. Patrick's Day Sunday. I'll have my full forecast for you coming up right after the break. A local sports broadcaster reached a major career milestone recently. KMMO Radio sports broadcaster Greg Schmidt completed his 4,000th broadcast at a high school girls basketball game between St. Paul and Higginsville last month. KMUH's Brooke Burchill was there for the big event and has more about Schmidt's history of broadcasting in Lafayette County. Very cool. To read more about Greg Schmidt and the community celebration of his 4,000th broadcast, go to our website at KOMU.com. The Missouri basketball team hasn't played well away from home. And coming up next in sports, we'll show you all of Missouri's struggles leading up to the SEC tournament. Tomorrow afternoon. All right. So, Ari, with this Mizzou Ole Miss game behind us, let's talk about Selection Sunday. Where are the Tigers uh, projected? Right now, they're projected to be an eight seed. Not sure what one seed they'll play, but it's just been not to depress you guys too much, but the Tigers <laughs> five and seven in 12 uh, games with the lead in the final minute. Uh, so, that's the reason they're an eight seed uh, instead of higher. Good night, guys.